In this lecture, we're going to go through the four most common distributions used for hypothesis testing. Now, I don't want you to get the idea that these are the only four. There are dozens, if not hundreds. It just depends on your definition of a unique dis distribution. But when you get into mixing different kinds, uh, it gets messy. But these four, if you really understand these four distributions, you should be able to understand most of what's going on in hypothesis testing. Now I am not going to go through the little nitty-gritty details about these four distributions and how to use them by reading things on a table, etc. We'll go through a couple of examples later, but I assume that you've already seen these distributions somewhere and what my purpose is going to be in this lecture is to try to unify these four distributions so that when you see a certain situation you don't have to memorize is it an F test, is it a chi-squared test, is it a T test, or is it a normal distribution Z test. You ought to be able to recognize what to do from the calculations that go into doing a test. So let's look at these four. Now we've already looked at the normal distribution and normally we, we will talk about when we're using a normal distribution a um, standard normal distribution just because this is what uh, is handy to have in a table and I want you to think about a normal distribution as coming from a sum or average of many small influences why is something normally distributed because it comes from adding up many small influences and a standard normal is just a normal distribution that has been standardized and has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of 1. And I'll use this kind of notation here. Z with a tilde. Tilde often we'll use as shorthand for is distributed as. Now things are normally distributed according to something called the central limit theorem. This is one of the things that more people get wrong uh, than you can shake a stick at. And the central limit theorem very simply says, if you take n independently generated, so there, there no correlation between the generating process, they're statistically independent. If you take n numbers that are independently generated and you add them up, then the resulting total, the resulting sum, will have a normal distribution as n goes to infinity. N goes to infinity. And so, the more randomly, independently generated numbers that you uh, generate and add up, the closer the resulting totals will have a uh, normal distribution. And you can experiment this on your own. Just grab a phone book and take, um, say, series of phone numbers. Take Now, n needs to be high. And usually we say at least 30 is high enough. So look in the phone book and get, um, say, five phone numbers and add up all the digits in the phone numbers, like 3 plus 3 plus 6 plus 7 plus 2 plus 5 plus 1. And then keep adding that for five phone numbers in a row, write down the total. And then do it for the next five numbers, write down the total. And if you, if you do that, say, 50 times and you get 50 totals, make a histogram it'll make a nice bell-shaped normal distribution. And you can picture this. Let me show you a, a website here on uh, jcu.edu. And um, this is a picture of what's called a quinsunk, or a bean machine, as sometimes people will call it. And this is uh, a, an applet that is on the web that is not working. Okay, I actually had to go into Internet Explorer to get it to work. Uh, so what we're looking at here is, is a visual idea of where normal distributions might come from. Uh, you have a ball entering in the top. And this is actually kind of a binomial process that we have here where there's a 50% chance of a heads, say, if you go to the right, or a 50% chance of tails if you bounce to the left. And if you just keep bouncing along enough, and I'm just going to make this go faster and faster, you can see how these balls pile up 
down at the end. And let's see, let me raise this up here. And as the bio balls go left and right, adding up multiple small influences, then what you end up with in the end is something that looks like a normal distribution, roughly. Now, this idea was originally thought up by Sir Francis Galton, and he invented a little device with pins where you would drop beans down it, and he would demonstrate to people, this is where this bell-shaped distribution comes from. So, in the statistics program R, if you want to look up something on a normal distribution, you can type in QNorm and then put in a probability, such as 0.05, and it'll tell you the z critical Z value that has P less than that. And P norm Z, you put in a Z score, it will calculate the area less than it. And in Excel, there are similar kinds of functions, norms env and norms dist. And um, where do you use the normal distribution? Well, anything where you're adding up large numbers of numbers. And the most common place you probably see the normal is for averages when you know the population standard deviation. Why are averages normally distributed if you know the population standard deviation? Because you're adding up a lot of numbers and then you're dividing by n. So it's not the dividing that makes something normally distributed, it's the adding process. Now once you understand where a normal distribution comes from, the next distribution to think about is the chi-squared distribution. So chi-square is characterized by degrees of freedom. You need to know how many degrees of freedom in order to use it. Where does it come from? Well, if you have n normally distributed things and you square those normally distributed things, standard normal, sorry, the, the n things have to have a standard normal distribution, a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. If you square those normally distributed things and then add them up, you've got a chi-squared with n degrees of freedom. Now, uh, there are various functions in Excel, chi-inf, chi-dist, or in R, uh, q-chi-sq, or p-chi-sq, in order to use these distributions, calculate probabilities and look up critical values. Where do you use the chi-squared? Well, the most common use, all you have to do is think of why would we even invent a distribution where you're squaring things and adding them up? What's the use of that? Well, we'll think about any kind of formula where you're squaring things and adding them up. And you have to look no further than calculating a variance in order to see how that might be a useful thing to know how things are distributed. So with a variance, you take each number, subtract the mean, square them, and add them up and then divide by n minus 1. And so what you're implicitly assuming is, uh, if you're going to use a chi-squared distribution, is those things you're squaring and adding up in a variance are normally distributed. And so you use the chi-squared test for tests involving variances, one variance in any case. Now the student's t distribution is the next distribution you can understand but you have to know the chi-square first. A student's t is also has degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom for a t distribution come from the same place as the degrees of freedom for a chi-square. Because a student's t distribution, if you look at this formula here, is what you get if you take something that has a z, standard normal distribution, and you take something that's a chi-squared, that's that x, and you take the square root of the chi-squared, divide it by the square root of the degrees of freedom, then this whole thing, standard normal, divided by the square root of a chi-squared, divided by the square root of n, is distributed as a t-distribution. Now where do you see a t-distribution? This is the most common place right here. A t-statistic for one sample mean you have a sample mean minus some null hypothesis value, and it's divided by an S, which is a sample variance, square root of a sample variance, divided by the square root of N. And so this uh, 
is going to have a t distribution because we're assuming that the sample mean on top has a normal distribution and on the bottom we have a square root of a chi squared because the sample variance is the square root of a uh, variance which is a chi squared divided by the square root of n. Now the f distribution is also easy if you understand a chi squared. All an f distribution is you have a that is distributed as a chi squared with n1 degrees of freedom and b distributed with n2, two chi squares. The ratio of those two chi squared distributions are an f. And remember that an f distribution has two degrees of freedom one in the numerator and one in the denominator and you can just see those two degrees of freedom right there. And in the next video we'll look at some examples.